science has the, the potential to be transformative. Uh, new knowledge can be put together. Uh, life is a lot more complicated. And this is why you need to look at um, liberal arts and socioeconomics and things that can't be pinned down so precisely in numbers and measured by, by instruments. Um, but the, the, the blend of the two, you know, um, is where you get optimization, where you apply science to the lives of people uh, to Im improve the quality of life. A few years ago, I started a research group in geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is going to be one of the big areas for development in the coming years, sort of in preparation to get people trained for this big development in renewable energy. Because many of the islands with the potential, the high potential that we have, can capture more than enough energy um, which they can use for the entire country as well as export to other islands. So far there is only one geothermal energy plant in the Caribbean, that's in the Buyante plant in, in Guadeloupe. Solar energy can be converted into solar thermal energy and also into electricity directly. We have used solar energy traditionally for drying of crops and there are many crop dryers which have been developed. For heating of water, you saw the two types of solar water heaters, but this two kilowatt photovoltaic system is a system which provides enough electricity to power a house. This is one of the first four grid tied systems that we've had in the country. Traditionally, you know, we've had a faculty of engineering and we had a faculty of science and those in science do research and do experiments and so forth. But now there's an increased emphasis on converting science into usable products and services. We have, a, I would say, a rich pool of flora and fauna, and we are the ones who need to investigate the potential of the product, chemical products that they actually produce. We have so many unexplored plants, bacteria, fungi, they produce certain compounds under different conditions. So we are trying to harness those, those compounds to see how they can benefit um, human consumption. So we find many people are opting now to, to stop using these traditional medicines. So they are opting now to go for natural human remedies. For example, if a plant is being used, um, you take it and you boil the leaves and you drink it to sort of reduce pressure. Then we want to find out now what is the actual compound that is actually reducing the pressure. We have the whole environmental and, env and analytical area as well. And how to mitigate some of these environmental disasters that may befall us. People really are very concerned about their, their, their environment and so they tend to ask a lot of questions. How do you improve air quality? Well, you could change the fuel so that the cars or the trucks are emitting, what they are emitting is not as harmful as what it was before. So that's where the chemistry comes in. My interests range from biofuels all the way through to water quality. But I think when you bring it down, it's really about monitoring the environment. Well, the Guanapo Landfill Project is basically to characterize the level of pollution in the air, water, and soil in and around the landfill. And the end result would be information about what is going on there and its likely impact on the people and the ec ecology of the area. One of our professors has been working in the area of synthetic chemistry. For example, synthesizing various compounds that may be active against viruses, say the dengue virus. The research that I've been doing is based on the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which is a vector of dengue and chikungunya viruses. And we are now in a position to actually inform the rest of the world um, in methodologies that could be used to control and in some cases eradicate the vectors of dengue and chikungunya. We have found a mid-morning peak in biting, as well as an extension in the biting times after 6 p.m. One of the other important things that we have discovered is that most of the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, as many as 81.9% are found inside bedrooms, especially in areas where there are a lot of street lighting and a lot of artificial light. The control mechanisms that we have developed based on that behavioral pattern would be residual spraying, where you actually spray the internal walls of houses in order to kill the maximum number of mosquitoes. 
Mathematics still remains the base of most of the science disciplines and definitely the base for computer science. I, I see that there is great value in having more interdisciplinary research performed within UB. I, I believe that I can uh, encourage that uh, in, in my particular areas, which are mathematics, computer science, and electrical engineering. I work in the area of mathematical modeling. So that means that any system that there is or any kind of situation in the country that involves figures or rates or graphs or anything like that, we can make a mathematical model and study something theoretically that will allow us to make predictions that will help us to save money. Somebody walking down the street is quite likely to be a victim of crime. And that's one of the problems that we are studying right now. And what we're trying to do is develop mathematical models of crime. And same way we can model the spread of an infectious disease, we can model the growth of gangs. And what we did is we used measures from the Anti-Gang Act 2011. Some of the measures we looked at was longer jail sentences. And we plugged that into the model. And what we found was that, yes, the longer jail sentences will get rid of the gang members. But what we really need to do is to do some kind of intervention. What I did is I created a, a, a platform called uh, data.tt. And on that platform, um, we hope to have open data sets from multiple sources. One data set on data.tt uh, it contains all the murder statistics of the country. And that's updated on a daily basis. It contains the uh, murder, the date, the location, etc. Uh, so if somebody wants to develop an app that would uh, provide some um, information about crime, areas to avoid, etc., they would be able to use that information in their app. Dr. Margaret Bernard leads a project on, um, called AgriNet. And our team has gone the way of developing an open data platform in which we're getting a lot of institutional data, data on um, production, on prices, on trade, and uh, even climate data. And the project is uh, focused on building ICT applications in the agriculture sector. And then app developers, whether it be mobile apps or web apps, would be able to use that data to, to provide um, useful applications to the users. We recently launched AgriExpense, as a mobile app, particularly for farmers, where they can track their expenses for various crops that could be used if you're going to apply for loans or if you're applying to the government for reimbursement because of floods or something like that. At the Faculty of Science and Technology, there are specific areas that we focus in one of it is observational astronomy. And that's usually what people think that astronomy is, that you are there underneath the stars, gazing through telescopes in the darkest of the nights. Astrobiology is one of the cutting edge fields in astronomy today. And with it, what we are trying to do is to answer the fundamental questions of where does life in the universe come from? We are finding answers and clues to questions that the entire world or can I say the entire universe is interested in. My interests range from uh, biodiversity and ecosystem services that support human well-being and its impact on the socioeconomics to climate change and its impact on people, climate change mitigation and adaptation. Climate change is a, a large global phenomenon, but what most people are interested in is how it impacts them. So we are working across disciplines, actually, to develop the research and, and, and to actually collaborate with, with researchers in the sciences, natural sciences, as well as the social sciences, on trying to bring solutions to the problem. First of all, a number of islands in the Caribbean will suffer a major erosion of, of the coastline and perhaps even disappear over time. At an international level, I've been involved with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. We have constructed a number of maps and so forth which we make available to the government as future projections, not predictions, but projections based on the best science. And then they could factor that into the decision making and, and the plans and the policy. This is not an issue that can be solved in one discipline alone. We have to collaborate across disciplines in order to solve this problem.